Hi, my name is Chris Crone. I'm wealthy and it's because I did everything upside down. Society basically said, go to college, make good money, have a great lifestyle and retire rich. The reality is you go to college, you go deep into debt and then you get a job and then you're just trying to keep up with the Joneses. And at the end of the day, you never really save any meaningful amount of money for investing and you don't retire rich, you retire poor. And over the years as I've mentored people, I've made a list of the top five reasons why people aren't wealthy. It's because there's five really dumb decisions that they make. Dumb. Stupid. Crazy. Dangerous. Dangerous. Change these five things, you'll change your future. Number one, let's talk about buying too much car. Last year, we broke records, but not in a good way. The average car payment has just hit a surprising $730 a month. It is a high that we have never hit before. People are getting really comfortable with literally just getting a little bit more car, a little bit more car, having higher payments, higher payments, and you know what? You're gonna pay for it. Now compare that with this stat. 61% of people that make over a quarter million dollars on up do not drive luxury cars. They drive the atypical stuff. And to boot, you've got Zuckerberg and Bezos, two of the world's richest men that are driving Hondas. No, I'm not kidding. Bezos drives a Honda Accord. Zuckerberg drives a Honda Fit. So if a mortgage is your number one expense, for most people, a car is their number two. And acclimating to a culture where we want the nicer and nicer things in life before we can actually afford them, basically we become a culture of instant gratification. And yet I'm gonna tell you right now that wealth isn't built overnight, but wealth does come to the people who are like, ooh, I'm gonna put off the finer things of life for just a little bit. We're not gonna go crazy spending our winnings and we're not gonna let this money change us. What are you talking about? This money is our ticket to the good life. Starting now. I just bought a giant room full of gold coins and I'm gonna dive into it like Scrooge McDuck. I'm gonna stockpile all this money and guess what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna sit on it in my savings account. I'm going to invest it. Bottom line is a car is not an investment. The moment you drive it off the lot, you've already lost like 28% of its value or whatever it is. And it's not making you money. Understand this, an asset makes you money, a liability costs you money. The car costs you money. But Chris, I drive it for Lyft. I'm like, no, all that's doing is zapping your time away and now it's becoming an even bigger liability. Here are a couple of rules to keep in mind when it comes to buying a car. The first one is called the one-tenth rule. Aim to spend no more than 10% of your gross annual income on the purchase price of a car. For example, if your annual income is $50,000, then limit your car purchase price to $5,000. But Chris, that $5,000 car is gonna be a piece of crap. I know, that's the rule. Now today, I drive a custom six by six Apocalypse Jeep. This thing is bad A. In fact, I have a 50 caliber Modus strapped to the top of it. I bought that car cash. I had that car custom from start to finish, interior to exterior. I got a tax write off and I got the government to pay for almost half of it. How did I have the money to do that? Well, there's a time to save, there's a time to invest, and there's a time to splurge. And guess what? When you have money because you invested money, it's time to splurge. The secret really is delaying that gratification and just saying, hey, this is a season in my life where we're just going to live with less and have a, a lower baseline lifestyle because there are better things that we want down the road. And by the way, it's not even a trade of like, oh, I want like nicer stuff down the road. It's about freedom. Like literally all that invested money turned into businesses that paid us all this money where it's like, shoot, like so much of that passively comes in. We can really just live life on our terms. Second thing that is gonna keep you poor is buying too much house. This happens all the time, especially when you look at the affordability crisis and the fact that homes keep going up. There's a lot of people out of fear that are just saying, hurry and get in what you can or we may never be able to get a house. And they make the mistake of buying too much house. Now, if you strap yourself with your number one expense to a debt that is a struggle every month for you to pay, it's going to deplete all your discretionary income that should be used for what? It should be used for investing. I always tell people on your very first home, make it more about a house than a home, which means, is it a smart investment if we only lived here for a couple years and then house hacked our way into something else with another 3% down payment how would this house work as an investment property and if you're like shoot we wouldn't be able to rent it positive but I would not get that house because really the house should be a tool for you to build wealth after all by the time you get 65 years old you'll have more equity in your house than you have money in your retirement plan which means that the house you pick is a really important decision Aim to keep your housing costs, which includes the mortgage, property taxes, homeowners insurance, to 30% or less of your income. 
If you're feeling house poor, it's likely because you've exceeded this threshold. And I would encourage you to make that number as small as possible or maybe consider buying like a fourplex, living in one of the units and renting out the other three. Like there's a time to hoard, to invest, to get ahead rather than saying, man, but when my friends and family come over or my sweetheart, man, I just, I don't know. I want to feel like we're living like this really incredible, crazy lifestyle. And it's like, yeah, you're going to be poor your entire life. Suck it up, buttercup. I hope you're enjoying your lifestyle choices now. Here's the second thing to keep in mind. If you've bought a house and it's gone up in value, you can get a home equity line of credit and then take some of that money out and then transfer it into another house. But this time, make it a smart investment with a positive cash flow. Now you have an asset that's going up in value and on top of that, you have extra income. Now real estate is an asset, not a liability. Newsflash, your own home, even if it goes up in value, it's still a liability. Do you know why? Because you have to pay every month to have it. When you have an investment property, it pays you every month because you have it. By the way, if that's tickling your fancy and you're like, shoot, that sounds smart. How do I get into something like that? My brand new book, Have It All, is in the link below. Good news, it's free. You just gotta cover the shipping on it. This book will give you the strategy on how I started with nothing and built my fortune and how you can too. Number three, keeping high interest debt. If you wanna know what keeps people poor, it's that they've accumulated expensive debt. Listen, it's one thing to go to college and have like a five or a 6% loan. It's altogether different to be like, you know what, we kind of splurged on money before it actually hit the bank and it's sitting on a credit card right now at a neat and tidy 22%. 20%, 18%, anything double digits, that's scary. You gotta get that stuff paid down. Now, I don't want you to mistake me for a Dave Ramsey moment where I'm like, do everything at all costs to get out of debt. I, I'm not that dude because I would rather have my hard earned money invested in making me money, but I need you to understand the arbitrage of what you're borrowing at and what you're making. For example, if you have high interest debt at, call it, 15% and you're like, Chris, I finally saved up some money. I can buy a, a property and it's going to pay me in cash flow 5% a year. I'm like, well, you kind of are being charged 15% on this debt. I love the idea of buying an asset that goes up in value, but it's only making you 5% on the cash on cash. I get that the overall house might be making you 25 or 30%. Let's consolidate into low interest debts. Okay, Chris, here's another scenario. I have low interest debts. I've got 30,000 on this credit card at 5%. And I've got this one at 0%. And Chris, the debt is eating me alive. I just got to get it paid off, but I do have a chunk of money that I saved up. What should I do? Don't pay off the debt. Dave Ramsey, I'm talking to you. Don't pay off the debt because if you eliminate that debt, all the years that it took to make that money, it's just poof, it's gone. That debt is cheap and easy to service. And if you're living within your budget, which means it's like, Chris, I can service the debt every month. There's leftover money, good. Take that money and invest it. In other words, if it's high interest, get rid of it. If it's low interest, invest instead. Let's take a quick moment to talk about the difference between a good debt and a bad debt. Chris, there's a good debt? Well, yeah, like I go millions of dollars in debt all the time, like every month on good debts. Well, what's the difference between a good debt and a bad debt? A bad debt costs you money, a good debt makes you money. It's like, Chris, I just had to have the new boat so this summer I can go out and we're gonna live it up on the lake. And I get it, it's like that boat that you put on credit card essentially is you know, $600 a month. It's a bad debt because it doesn't make you money. Unless you start charging your friends for boat rides and hanging out with you, you're no longer gonna be the cool friend that has a boat. You're gonna be the douche friend that is like charging them to use it. So the boat's not gonna make you money. But similarly, you could go into the same kind of debt, for example, for buying a business. And let's just say that the business is costing you $3,000 a month. And so that's what you have to pay to service the debt. But the business also brings in $8,000 a month, $5,000 left over after everything is serviced. It's like, is that a good debt or a bad debt? It's a great debt. Why? Because I have an extra $5,000 in my life every single month. That's an extra $60,000 a year. The boat costs me $600 a month. So every year I am down $7,200 in interest payments on the boat. The business makes me $60,000 positive a month. That's good. That's bad. That makes sense. This next one is a toughie. And I'm going to tell you right now that this keeps more people poor than anything else. Have you ever heard the phrase keeping up with the Joneses? Well, I call that lifestyle creep. Lifestyle creep is when it's like, you know what? We make a little bit more money. We got to raise and we spend it a little bit more. So we have a nicer lifestyle. And then five years passes and I got, you know, a few different raises and we're doing better. And then we upgraded our house and we upgraded our car. There's a law out there called Parkinson's law. And it basically says, that you are going to spend plus or minus 10% of the money that you make. If it's plus 10% of the money you make, you are reckless spending, which means you're spending money you don't yet have. If you're saving 10%, you're probably feeling good like, 
hey, I'm a bit of a penny pitcher. Like, I saved 10% of my income. And both suck. Like, they're not going to get you where you want to go. You got to save more than 10%. You got to pay yourself more than that. And it's not for savings. It's not for 401ks and IRAs and other loser programs that never pan out. You got to put it in investments because your money has to work for you. The only way out of the rat race. Bottom line, for every soul, hands down, there are no other answers on the planet. This is the only one, is when your money works for you. And it can't work for you and make money for you unless you have something to invest, which means you can't do the lifestyle creep thing. So here's a couple things that you need to do to avoid lifestyle creep. Budgeting, create a budget, stick to it. Discern wants from needs. Like what do you need versus what do you want and delay gratification on those wants because every want that you say no to is money in your bank account for investing. Avoid the entitlement personality of I deserve it. Once a year, Donna and I spend a day treating ourselves. What do we treat ourselves to? Clothes. Treat yourself. Fragrances. Treat yourself. Massages. Treat yourself. Mimosas. Treat yourself. Fine leather goods. Treat yourself. Number five, I did save the best for last. The thing that will keep you more poor than anything else is that you don't pay yourself. Wait a second, Chris, I'm supposed to be paying myself? No, I earn money for my job and then I pay all of my debts. I pay my bills and I buy things. I'm like, nah, -uh. what's the biggest expense you're ever gonna have to pay in your life? It's actually not a mortgage. It is not your car. It's the government. The government is taxing you and they're gonna extract more money from you your entire life than anything else. Well, let me ask you, if you're a free person living in a free world in a free country, don't you think that you deserve to be the one that makes the most, gets paid the most, and is prioritized? Listen, it's crazy that we live in a world where it's like, okay, Chris, this is the way I do my budget. Like, I got my paycheck, and now I'm paying all the bills, and I'm wondering, will there be money left over at the end? I'm like, that is a plan to fail, and you will fail, my friend. But instead, if you say, my paycheck came in, I took 20% of it off the top and I paid myself. It goes in a special account called my destiny, my financial future, where I'm gonna put my money to go to work for me to build the life of my dreams. And then with the 80% left over, well, let's pay mortgage and other bills and see if there's, oh shoot, we ran out of money. I would rather you go default and cancel some of your subscriptions and learn how to live by that budget and knowing that you prioritize paying yourself first. Wealthy people do this. Listen, you can live to eat or you can eat to live. And financially, it's the exact same principle. You literally can be just paying to service all of your debts and feel like a prisoner a slave your entire life, or you can pay yourself first so that you have a brighter financial future with making good choices, and then hope that there's enough left over. And if there ain't, then you better clean that up. Three things that will happen when you pay yourself first. Number one, wealth accumulation. By allocating a portion of your income to savings that is designed for investing, you now get to actually build wealth over time. You now have a shot, a possibility of freedom. Number two is an emergency fund. I call it a sleep well at night account. You pay yourself first to make sure you've got a financial cushion. When you do this, it leads to number three, stress reduction. There's a certain amount of money that you need in your bank account so that you can sleep at night without having any, any kind of worry or stress. And guess what? You gotta get into the mindset of abundance in the investing game to win it. You can't do that if you're living in fear and scarcity. When it comes to paying yourself first, here's the rule. I want to see if you can take 10% of your current income and set it aside for investing. And if you can't, then you have to retool your budget. Once you get to 10%, now what I want you to do is I want you to start thinking, how do I get a raise? How do I get smarter? How do I eliminate some debt? Because I gotta take that 10% and my goal is to get it to 15% and eventually 20%. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, Chris, I did it, man. 20% of what I'm making, I'm saving. I'd say, cool, make sure you're not penny pinching. That money is there for investing. And if you're at 20%, now I wanna encourage you to go to 30%, 40%. The goal eventually is to get to 100%. And you're like, no way. Like, how can I save 100% of my money? It's simple. Every time you set money aside and you invest, those investments in time produce returns for you. When the returns become bigger than all the money you make at your job, newsflash, you don't need one anymore. That is what creates the cycle of wealth and ultimately frees you. You become financially free when all of your investments make collectively more money than all your needs and wants. So Chris, I don't have to delay gratification forever? It's like, no, you delay it until your investments are producing more than your needs. Once your needs are met, guess what? You can start saying hello to wants. 
And then when you invest more money and you have all your wants met, then what? Now you have a lot of leftover money for charity, doing good in the world. Listen, you're not rudderless. There's a roadmap for how you do this. When I wrote my book, Have It All, it has to do with the five ROIs of how you go from nothing to wealthy. And of course, being super, super free. And of course, being free. If you value your freedom and if you want to live life on your terms, you're going to have to put a plan in place and I've written the book. I've got the plan for you. Here's what's great about Have It All. It is it is the ultimate guide for doing it in the shortest time frame possible. So if you say, okay, Chris, like currently I'm on a 30 year track. I don't know if I really want that. I'm like, cool. How about a 20 year track? How about a 10 year track? What about a five year track? I've seen people do it in less than five years, but if you would like a really serious five-year game plan on how to be completely financially independent, off the grid, living life on your terms, your lifestyle, the way that you want, the book is a gift from me to you today. It is free. I want you to click the link below and grab a copy of it right now. Chris, does that book answer the question of how you made your first million dollars in your mid-20s? Yes, it actually does. But on top of that, I got a bit of a shortcut. You could click right here, watch this video in addition to having the book. Let me show you right now exactly how I did it.